Hiya, babe. Say, how about a little... Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. You all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Ann Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere. For a time once, I thought it'd be changed to Mrs. Eddie Jordan. But I didn't marry Mr. Eddie Jordan because he had an impediment in his speech. He couldn't say words like, Maisie, will you be my wife? Well, so here's little bachelor Maisie. Instead of an ivy-covered honeymoon cottage in the pitter-patter of tiny feet, I am in a tiny fourth-floor boarding house room. And the only pitter-patter I hear is the rain dripping in through a leak in the ceiling. Oh, just a minute, Mrs. Kennedy. Just a minute. Ouch. It ain't the landlady, Maisie. It's me, Merton. Oh, hello, Merton. Hi. What's the matter? Oh, I just burnt my finger. Every time I try to hide my percolator in a hurry, I always grab it where it perks instead of where it laters. Oh, gosh. Well, you got to watch that cooking in your room, Maisie. You know Mrs. Kennedy's nose. Yeah. You'd think I'd be more careful, wouldn't you? Yeah. After all, I've been sniffed out of boarding house rooms from Maine to California. Well, how's about joining me for a cup of coffee, Mert, before you run off to the salt mines? Uh, oh, oh well, gee, Maisie, uh, thanks, but I just have time to get down to the store under the wire. I just knocked to let you know it's okay now. Oh, thank you, Mert. But there's really no hurry. I'm only taking a cold shower this morning. Oh, how can you take cold showers on mornings like this? Well, gee, no choice. By the time I get to our community bathroom, our fellow boarders have taken all the hot water. Oh, well... You can take a hot one today, Maisie. I, uh, I saved my water for you. Oh, that's real sweet of you, Mert. Uh, say, Maisie. Yeah? They're having a dance at the Y Saturday night, and I... Mm-hmm. Well, all the fellas are bringing girls. And... Well, girls are nicer to dance with than fellas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I thought if, if you didn't have nothing particular doing... Merton Falsgruber. Are you inviting me to make with the feet with you? Well, gosh, Maisie, I, I know you being in show business, you meet, well, rich guys who are more exciting to dance with. Exciting? Don't you believe it, Sonny? I've had all I want of them retreaded old playboys. Oh, g- gosh, then you mean you'd rather, I mean, somebody like me? Why, sure, Mert. At least with you, I know when you say let's go out on the balcony for a breath of fresh air that you're really interested in breathing. Yes, I am. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Maisie. Then it's a date? Sure. My act closes at the theater Friday, so I'll be in the Miss clear. Miss Revere! Oh. Miss Revere! Oh, Mrs. Kennedy wants you, Maisie. Oh. I wonder what Miss Dryrod of 1916 wants. There's a gentleman to see you downstairs, Miss Revere, and Mr. Eddie Jordan. Eddie Jordan? Eddie? Whoa! Maisie wants... I'm coming right down, Mrs. Kennedy. <laughs> in here, Miss Revere. Eddie. Maisie. Gosh, it's really you. Yeah, it's me. Gee. Gosh. Now, that's what I call a hunk of scintillating conversation. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, we'd like to be... Uh, well, if you yeah, you mind. know how it is. <laughs> Maisie, at my age, I just know how it was. <laughs> Gee. Eddie, I'm so happy I could cry. This isn't the time for anything but this. Oh, Eddie, you sure know how. Now that I've found you again, honey, I'm never going to let you go again. (sighs) Maisie, why did you ever run out on me? Back in Scottsville, we were so, so... That's why I ran out. We were so-so. Look, I would have asked you to marry me a long time ago, honey, back in Scottsville, but 
Well, you know what I was making selling insurance. Well, Eddie, I could have lived on your salary. I know you could have, but what would I have lived on? I left Scottsville because there was no future there selling insurance. And I left because there was no future there with you. Eddie, honey. Yeah? How did you ever wind up in this town? Oh, I just roamed around the country looking for you mostly. I happened to stop off here, and luckily I found a job. Oh, doing what, Ed? Insurance. Oh, gee, that's grand. Salary isn't much. Mm. But it's nice, clean work. Just enough money for a single man. Oh, we won't be in this financial rut forever, honey. After all, I've still got my engineer's diploma from college. Well, that's nice. In case things get real tough, you can always sell the frame. Someday, honey, I'll get a break. Someday, Dame Chance will smile at me. And you'll smile back just like you do at all, Dames. Oh, Maisie, honey, stop it. You're the only girl for me. You always will be. Oh, well, I'm sure you mean it, Eddie. You've forgotten all about that arch rival of mine back in Scottsdale. Hmm. Funny, I can't remember her name. You mean Marsha Brent? Yeah. Funny how her name came back to you, just like that. Silly kid, that Marsha. But cute, didn't you think? No, I didn't think. You didn't think. Poor little Marsha. She sure tried hard to get me a job with her old man's engineering company. She sure stuck her neck out. Well, if he ever sticks it out again, I'll slap it right back in. Oh, why, Maisie, I do believe you're jealous. Me? Jealous? Yeah. <laughs> you're darn tootin' I am. Eddie Jackson, if I ever catch you even looking at another woman, I'll... Kill me? Yeah. The hard way. Like this. Ah, oh, beautiful way of going, honey. A beautiful way. Oh, and talking about going, i got to get back on the job. Uh, suppose I meet you downtown at noon, honey, and then I'll take you out to lunch, just like always. Okay, Eddie, dear. But I know you'll be tired after all that work, so I insist on carrying my own tray. <laughs> Your Mr. Jordan should be comfortable in this room, Maisie. Of course, it isn't as close to the bath as your room. Oh, I don't think Eddie would mind running up two flights, Mrs. Kennedy. He was very athletic in college. Uh, of course, he does understand about cooking in the room. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you and your fiancé ever feel that you don't care to go out to eat, well... Uh, yes? Uh, I could fix a pretty good dinner for you. Why, Mrs. K... I always thought that... that I'm a dried-up old prune, a hatchet-faced old woman with ice in her veins. Oh, I don't think that at all, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, you should, because I am. No, you're not really, honey. Honey. <laughs> I haven't been called that in 30 years. Man trouble? Uh-huh. May not show, Maisie, but love has kicked me in the face. Oh, it shows, Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it has. Mm. Mr. Kennedy isn't dead. He... He ran away. Oh, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do... Well, there is, Maisie. Don't make the same mistake I did. Honey, I'm a little older than you. Huh? A uh, whole lot older than you. Yeah, that's better. And I found out a little too late, unfortunately, that men are just boys grown up. Oh, I don't think my Eddie's grown up yet. He gets a kick out of the strangest things. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I mean is kids like to have everything they do appreciated. They like to be flattered, patted on the back. Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, that's my husband, he used to make airplanes out of newspaper and sail them through the living room. Oh, well, that's really silly. Yeah, it's a lot sillier going through life alone. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, i got to meet Eddie for lunch. And I'll show interest in everything he does, Mrs. K. I'll interest him to death if that's what it takes to keep a man happy. Oh, smart girl, Maisie. It keeps men happy and also keeps their minds off other women. It does? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying you're Mr. Jordan is the type. <laughs> After all, there are all kinds of men. Not when it comes to women, there ain't. <laughs> Maisie, honey, I can't remember when I've enjoyed lunch more. Wow, look at the time. i got to get back to the office. Oh, Eddie, not yet, please. Let's just sit here and talk. Uh, but, Maisie... Darling, I... what did you do this morning? Uh, you mean first thing? Yeah, right after you opened your eyes. Well, I got up. Oh, how thrilling. Thrilling? Yeah. Then what did you do? I washed. <gasps> you didn't. Of course, I always wash in the morning. Always? Certainly. Eddie, you're absolutely wonderful. Wonderful for washing when I get up? Well, yes. It's those little things that make a woman's heart thrill. 
Uh, look, Maisie, i got to rush back. Gee, Eddie, let's not stop this wonderful discussion. Look, Maisie, I, I don't have time. I'm already late in my bus. Oh, just, just a few more yeah. questions. I'm so interested in the interesting life you lead. Now, who works in the office with you? Oh, just a few fellows. Fellows? Uh-huh. Oh, how wonderful. Uh, Maisie, the boss, Mr. Evans, said if I'm ever the least now bit late again, he was going to... Now, wait a minute. Who else is in your office? Look, the boss, Mr. Evans... Naturally. He's... Does he have a secretary? Yes, she's very nice. Oh, Wonderful. She's about 60, I guess. Oh, wonderful. Maisie, the boss says... Yeah, but I guess he don't say smart things like you say. Afternoon, Jordan. Mr. Evans. You're late again, Jordan. You're fired. Goodbye, Jordan. Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Oh, Ed. You mean that was... Your... Yeah. I... uh... Now you can ask me all the wonderful questions you want. I've got plenty of time to answer them. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. need some extra towels, Mr. Jo... Maisie, you know the house rules about... You know? And this is Mr. Jordan's room. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Kennedy. Eddie ain't here. He went back to the office to clean out his desk. Oh. Is he still sore at you about losing his job, Maisie? Oh, he sure is, Mrs. Kennedy. On the way back from lunch, he took the only empty seat in the bus and let me stand right in front of him. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. I guess an old schmo like myself shouldn't have tried to give you advice on how to hold a man. No, it was all my fault, honey. I was the one that admired Eddie right out of a job. Well, he couldn't be too mad at you, Maisie. He did move in here. That shows he still wants to be near you. Yeah, and he did let me carry his bags from his old boarding house. That shows he likes me a little yet, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. I, yeah, I guess so. And uh, he's bound to appreciate your unpacking his things for him while he's away. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie sure had a lot of stuff, but I put it all away in the dresser drawers, and real neatly, too. Well, you look all pooped out after all that unpacking and stuff. Suppose you let me fix your cup of tea in my room. Oh, gee, thanks. I'll be swell. Oh, good evening, Maisie. Oh, Mrs. Kennedy. Hello, Hello Merton. Merton. How'd it go at the drugstore today? Oh, not so good, Maisie. Gosh, I, I, w- I was so excited about our date for Saturday night, I... I missed on five ice cream sodas. Five, Merton? Yeah. I threw the balls of ice cream up a little too high. Oh. Did the boss notice it, Merton? No, no, no. Thank goodness Mr. Peabody almost never looks up at the ceiling. Uh, Merton. Huh? Uh, about that date Saturday night, I, um... Yeah? Um... Uh, 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 Merton, we have a new boarder. A man. Oh, gee, that's swell. Uh, he's Maisie's fiance. Yeah. Swell. Well, of course, we had a fight. Oh, swell. I, well, I, I mean, too bad. But I'm sure they'll make up. It was only a small fight. Oh, too bad. Well, Maisie, do you think you'll make up by Saturday night? Well, I don't know, Merck. Eddie's very obstinate. Uh, 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 oh, gee, he is? I like obstinate men. Well, I, I gotta wash up for dinner. See ya. Huh? What about you, Maisie? You having dinner alone? I don't know, Mrs. Kennedy. I'll have to wait till Eddie gets back to the office. But I have my doubts. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm sure you'll forget what you did to him by tonight. Eddie forget? Mrs. Kennedy, you don't know Eddie. One of his parents must have been an elephant. Jordan, uh, I'll have my desk cleared out in a minute, Mr. Evans. You can stop clearing out your desk, Jordan. You mean you changed your mind about firing me? I never changed my mind, Jordan. There's a woman in the outer office to see you. A woman? If it's the same one I had lunch with, tell her no. No. I'll tell her. i got to get some fun out of life. Now, look here, you blonde... Hello, Eddie. Marcia. 
Marsha Brent, where did you come from? Well, my mother told me the stork brought me, but I've always had a sneaking suspicion. I mean, gosh, after all these years. Sit down, Marsha. Gosh, you look beautiful. Even more beautiful than that uh, blonde you were expecting? Oh, I thought you were Maisie. Maisie? Yeah. You mean you've caught up with her at last? Yeah, and I ain't so glad about it. She interferes with my business, gets in my hair, drives me nuts. Oh, then I don't stand a chance. You still love her. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, then, I guess you'll be happy to hear about your new job. New job? Well, I stopped off here for two reasons. My uh, scouts finally located you, and I thought, well, maybe Maisie was out of your system by now. Uh Uh-uh. Science hasn't found a cure for girls like Maisie. Uh, But you said uh, job, didn't you? Yes, little Marcia isn't one to let her heart rule her mind. Eddie, I'm United Engineering Company now. Oh, yeah, I, I heard about your father. Gee, I'm awfully sorry, honey. Please, Mr. Jordan, engineers don't go around calling their employers honey. Employers? A- engineers? Got a new project, Mr. Jordan. A big electrical plant in Niagara Falls. Interesting? Niagara Falls? For a fleeting moment, I thought we might kill two birds with one stone, but, um... Interested, Eddie? In the job, I mean. Am I? Fine. I'm leaving for Niagara Falls on the 812 tonight. Think you can make the same train? Oh, that's a little faster. But, but sure. Good. I'll have the tickets and meet you at the station. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Wait till I tell Maisie. Eddie, are you home? I sure am, Maisie. Come in. I want to tell you something. Well, I can hear you all right out here. Ah, oh, don't be silly. Come on in. All right. I'll leave the door open. Well, what for? Well, they can hear me better when I yell for help. Well, I'm not sorry at you, Maisie. Even if you did unpack my things. Well, I just thought I'd help. You're not sore? <laughs> no. Eddie Jordan, you just don't care that I lost your job for you. You're completely indifferent. Listen, Maisie, honey, forget about that old job. I, I never liked it anyway. Honey, I- I've got great news for you. You feel like hitting me? No, I feel like loving everybody. Honey, I just got a new job. You did? Just the kind I always wanted, too. Oh. N- now I can get my whole life straightened out. After a couple of weeks at Niagara Falls, I'll be able to tackle anything. Oh, of course you will. I... Niagara Falls? Did... did you say Niagara Falls? I sure did, baby. Oh, Maisie, just think of it. Niagara oh. Falls next stop. I can hardly believe it. Well, how do you think I feel? And do you know what I'm going to do there? Oh, don't tell me, Ed. It'll be so much more fun finding out for myself. Look, look, honey, I'll, I'll tell you more later. Right now, I've got to run out and get a few extra things I'll need. I, I better hurry. We're leaving on the 812 tonight. Oh, Eddie, honey, I can't wait to tell Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, she knows already. I told her as soon as I came home. Uh, you told her before me? Well, pretty sure I'd say yes, weren't you? You? Oh, Maisie, don't you understand? I'm, I'm just doing this to make you happy. Well, okay. But I'm not so sure this is going to work out. You and me are both in love with you. Oh, I gotta hurry. See you later. Come in. Hi. Hi. Uh, uh, Maisie, I I was just wondering what kind of a corsage you'd like for Saturday. You going someplace? (laughs) Yeah, I'm packing. Merton, Eddie and me are leaving for Niagara Falls tonight to be married. To be... Oh. Oh, then I guess it's it's off for Saturday night, huh? I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, that's all right, Maisie. Lots of luck. I I didn't like dancing anyway. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Uh, say, Maisie, Eddie just told me all about... Uh, you're packing. Well, naturally, Mrs. Kennedy, i got to have something to wear at Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah, it gets pretty cold up there, you know. Didn't Ed tell you? Well, yes, but he didn't tell me you were going along. Oh, well, I guess he's just bashful. He's never been married before, you know. Uh, well, he told me he's going with his new boss. Oh, that's silly. Even if Ed loved his new boss, he wouldn't take a man along on his honeymoon. It wouldn't be the same somehow. I've got a surprise for you, Maisie, you poor girl. Poor girl? Yes. Eddie said he's going with a... a... Marsha Brent. Oh, well, I wonder if I should pack any... Ex- uh, Marsha Brent. He said she's a friend from Scottsville. Oh, but I never thought... Well, she's not the type for Eddie's wife. Eddie said her father died and left her everything. And he can't be happy with just money either. 
Oh, Mrs. Kennedy, what'll I do? Well, I don't know what, honey, but whatever it is, you better work fast. Remember, his train leaves at 8.12. Yeah, there isn't much time. Mrs. Kennedy, hmm? this is an emergency. Come on. We're going to Eddie's room and help him pack. Well, why should we help him? Well, because if we don't, he's almost sure to catch his train. <laughs> Mrs. Kennedy and I thought you could use some help, Eddie, so here we are. Oh, well, that's right, Eddie. Anything we can do? Gosh, that's well of you both, but I'm just about ready. Well, anyway, I'm glad you came. I'd hate to leave without saying goodbye. Oh, you're going to kiss me farewell, aren't you, Eddie? Maisie, not now. I've only got about 35 minutes yet, and there's a couple of important things I haven't done yet to see you now. Oh, like what? Well, I've got to check over my things before I close the police. I, you know, I might have forgotten something. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Uh, let me see now. I've got my pajamas, shirts... Are you sure you packed your pajamas, Ed? Yeah. Neckties, huh? underwear, socks. You'll catch cold without pajamas. No, I packed them. Toilet articles, shoes. Well, suppose the train is wrecked at night and you aren't wearing pajamas. Well, I tell you that... You'll I... be ashamed to let them rescue you. I packed my pajamas, Maisie. They're at the bottom of the valise. Are you sure? Not only sure, I'm positive. I'm absolutely certain. I am... I am... You what? I'm wondering if I did pack them after all. Oh, Ed, you gotta be sure... Come on, Mrs. K. Turn the valise over. Oh, with pleasure. Maisie, well, wait a minute. Oh, gee, you didn't have to dump all the things out on the floor. Oh, Ed, you did pack them. <laughs> what a relief. What a mess, everything. Oh, sit down, Eddie. Mrs. K and I'll do it for you. Oh, dear. Look how you've creased your things. Mrs. K, mm. help me smooth out these handkerchiefs. Yes. Oh, gosh, there's about 30 of them. Is that all? you better go over each one twice. Maisie, do you want me to miss the train? Oh, stop worrying. I called up five minutes ago, and the man told me your train is half an hour late. Yeah, well, I called up five minutes ago, and the man I spoke to said it was right on time. Oh. Well, you must have talked to the engineer. He's at the front of the train. <laughs> Look, haven't you got that valise packed yet? Yeah, I've just finished. We got it packed all right, but you'll have to help close it, Ed. Closed easy enough before. <clears throat> What in the world did you put in here? Oh, you're just weak, Eddie. There's even more room now than before. There is. Well, there should be. I threw out that large tube of toothpaste. What'd you do that for? I need toothpaste. Well, you don't need the tube. I squeezed all the paste out of it first. Holy smoke. Now it'll be all over everything. Oh, no, it won't. She squeezed it into your pajama pocket. Oh, fine. I'm sure glad I didn't forget to pack my pajamas. Yeah, isn't it lucky? And you'll be wearing them when you clean your teeth. Maisie, you think of everything. <clears throat> oh, you got it closed. Finally. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, what time is it? Gosh, I don't want to be late. Well, it's... It, uh, Mrs. Kennedy. Huh? Oh. Uh, I don't know, Eddie. My watch stopped. Uh, Maisie, look at my wristwatch, will you? It's on the dresser. Uh, well, it isn't there now. It isn't? Gee, I've got to find it. I put it right there. Oh, Eddie, I just remembered. I packed your watch in the valise. Oh, swell. <clears throat> What's the matter, Ed? I can't even lift this police. Ways of time. I guess you got too much stuff in there, Eddie. Oh, gosh, it's only shirts and things. Isn't it a good thing I threw out the toothpaste, too? Doggone it. We'll have to open the police again. No wonder I couldn't lift it. Webster's unabridged dictionary. Maisie, why did you put this dictionary in here? Well, Eddie, you shouldn't have left it behind. You might want to read something on the train. Oh, what's the use? Now I'll have to run for it. Gee, I wish I knew what time it is. Maisie, are you coming? Yes, Ed. But it's so sad leaving your old home. Maybe forever. Maisie. Don't you want to see the bathroom just once more? It doesn't have to, Maisie. It's 8.15. What time did you say it was, uh, Mrs. She, she said she ate 15 minutes ago. Oh, won't I ever get out of here. Mr. Jordan? Uh, yes? Congratulations, and also there was a call for you from a Miss Brent. I took it. Uh, what did she say, Sonny? Yeah, yeah what, Merton? I am not a sonny, pal. I'm almost 19, and she said to tell Mr. Jordan that she's taking the train to Niagara Falls herself. Stubborn, isn't she? Yes, very. <laughs> she went by herself? Oh, no, no! Yes, yes. She said if you miss the train, you might as well miss the job, too, sonny. Job? Maisie Revere. I was going up there for a job. Money, dollars, future, something I've dreamed about all my life. Oh, but... Ed, I thought that... Well, I'm, I tried to detain you, so... You... Would... So you... All this... You wanted me to miss that train, didn't you? Out! Out, all of you! I'm gonna blow my brains out. 
Oh, what's the use? With my luck, I'd probably miss anyway. Don't worry, Maisie. You'll get over it someday. You should live so long, Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Maisie. Is there anything I can do? Yeah. Ask me about that date for Saturday night. I got a sneaking suspicion I'll be free to make it. <laughs> just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, I sure did at that time. But wouldn't you just know everything would get loused up? After more than two years, Eddie comes back into my life and then this. And now, as far as Eddie's concerned, I'm just a person to be forgotten. Like Whistler's father, John's first wife. Oh, well, maybe he'll get over it. Might as well trudge back upstairs to my room and have a good cry. If I have any strength left in my feet... To making that cry, maybe I'll just bend down and kick myself. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, B. Benaderet, Pat McGeehan, Joan Banks, and Joe Forte. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>